welcome to Writer to Writer. I'm your host, KJ Feiler, also known as Kat. I have two guests today. Meet award-winning authors Ross Hightower and Deb Heim. Ross is the creator of the Spirit Song Trilogy, and af after spending most of his life in the South, he found himself living in Milwaukee and loving it. One cold, snowy morning, a story stuck in his head, which wasn't unusual. What was unusual was what happened next. He wrote it down. That small story turned into his first novel, Spirit Sight. Deb Heim also found a life in Milwaukee after a vagabond existence in various suburbs across the South and Northeast. The urge to write fiction did not take hold until partner Ross Hightower tapped out that first draft for Spirit Sight. With Argent Blue, Deb says she served as sounding board researcher and fellow plot wrangler. Outstanding world building and complex believable characters make the Spirit Song Trilogy and Argent Blue must reads for both YA and adult readers. Hi Ross, hi Deb, how are you doing? Good, how you doing Kat? Doing good. <laughs> good. And this is my first time interviewing two authors at one time. And it's really cool that you guys write together. That's yeah, a miracle, so, right? <laughs> yeah. I know, right? No, it's And it's there was fun. Fun together, that's a real shock. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> how does that work? Um, so your mm -hmm. fantasy adventure transcends a single genre with a tapestry of plot lines that come together in a way that's nothing short of astounding. I would love for you to tell readers about the books, about the characters, about the plot lines. Okay, well, I, I've i always loved uh, stories that are epic in scale, um, mythic. Um, but I, I also like stories that are uh, personal uh, and have a lot of emotion and feel. Uh, so that... That's kind of what I wanted to do when I started writing um, and have a bit of a complicated mind. So um, it just, you know, grew. So that, but the, the, at the center of the story are two sisters, Minna and Aiden Hunter. Um, they live in a, in a remote village and a very agrarian uh, kind of land. Uh, and they have spirit sight, which means that they can see the spirits in the world. So the magic is a very shamanistic uh, kind of thing. And they would normally have been uh, arrested by the Inquisition because of their spirit sight, but they are, live in such a remote village that they are able to live uh, long enough for Minna to get close to being able to control her, her gifts. And then her sister gets arrested by the Inquisition. Mm -hmm. So she has to take off across the uh, empire to rescue her, um, find her spirit uh, guide, uh, meet allies, uh, and so that's the first book, Spirit Sight, is all about that. And in the um, beginning of of the um, book, it becomes evident that this wasn't always a crime. No. But, okay, you want to go? <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, they were a very peaceful people living in their mountains. Uh, and they uh, were uh, women. It was only women have Spirit Sight. And they're women called Sutmen who uh, were basically like the shamans, you know, they, they're judges, they're healers, um, and uh, they uh, had spirit sight. But when the empire came, they saw these women as a threat. Uh, so they um, suppressed the local religion. Uh, they suppressed their language, like a lot of, uh, um, you know, one of the, my inspirations was the way that uh, the Hawaiian language was suppressed, mm -hmm. uh, for example. So I like, I think a lot of examples from history. Um, and uh, so they were hunted down. Uh, and ultimately, there's only one Satman La. Uh, and she was hidden away uh, so that she would be ready uh, when Minna was ready to, to learn. And so that, that woman becomes, uh, her name is Biadu. She becomes uh, Minna's mentor. Mm -hmm. yeah. And some of it has to, oh, I'm sorry. Some of it has to do with the fact that they're very powerful and um, that power makes them dangerous. Right. So the empire is afraid of them. Yeah. 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 I mean, when I was reading the book, one of the things that came to mind for me historically, two things were something called the Welsh knot. And I thought you might have known about it. Um, Great Britain uh, for a long time suppressed the Welsh language. Now it's the banking industry language, but they didn't mm -hmm. want them talking about them. Right you know, when you're trying to subjugate people. And also the Navajo code talkers. I was mm -hmm. thinking about them, the fact that they they weren't allowed to speak their language and then they needed them in war. 
Right. Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of history of that because language is culture. Mm -hmm. And you look at like the French Canadians insisting on both languages. And there's a reason it's not just because they like French. It's it has to do with what it represents to them. Mm -hmm. And right. Uh, and well, one of the themes in uh, the the books, especially the prequel books, was Argon Blue is uh, a prequel, uh, is them trying to reclaim that culture, mm -hmm. right? uh, finding the old uh, among them to teach them the language right. so that they can revive the language. Um, yeah. <clears throat> there are a lot of themes running through this book. I was very impressed with it, especially as a YA, but also, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I'm finding that YA speaks to adults as often as it speaks to young yeah. adults. Well, we were huge when our kids were growing up, Harry Potter was coming up and we were the ones and yeah, we're big fans. Big fans. Yeah, right. And I have to say, I wasn't thinking about writing a YA book. It just, you know, maybe I have a YA look on the world or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, so, my personal take is that YA often addresses whatever it is that's happening in the world now from the point mm -hmm. of view of somebody who is going to be around when it matters. <laughs> right. That's yeah. true. That's right. Yeah. And these books are definitely very coming of age. You know, yeah. They're dealing with young people who are trying to find their way in the world at the same time they're having to deal with these, um, you know, these epic issues. Mm -hmm. And yet I would still say that um, you have a, a broader audience because I would say that it would be the same readers as, like you said, Harry Potter, Hunger Games, uh, would be the mm -hmm. same people who would be reading these books. And um, I don't know how you have, what the the analytics are telling you about your authors, but I'm betting there are a lot of women middle-aged. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's true. I mean, we don't get that many, we don't really get analytics from, you know, the sales of Amazon and so forth, but I've had a lot of, you know, some of my beta readers are uh, uh, older women, women who've never read fantasy ever mm -hmm. before. Yeah. And, my mom is 87. Yeah. Yeah. She's a <laughs> reader for this latest book, Desultai, and she started reading Patrick Rothfuss. Tough okay. books. Right? Because, because of... she was reading our books. Right. Yeah. And and the full, the full uh, story is going to be like 11 books. Okay. And she's, she's telling me, you have to finish them. Before <laughs> I die. <laughs> so there's no pressure. So no pressure she's, at all. She's yeah. super healthy. So, you know, fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So the two of you wrote Arjun Blue as co-authors. How did that come about? Well, when I was writing Spirit Sight, uh, these people that um, are, live in these mountains, they're called the Alaos, which is, it comes from a phrase from Norwegian that means all of us. So that kind of gives you an idea of what they are. They're very community uh, oriented and family oriented and they're very peaceful and I started to wonder well how do these people learn to start fighting back they have no history mm. uh, for that kind of thing so Ardrin Blue started as uh telling that story mm -hmm. how did a small group of people come together and say hey wait a minute maybe we can fight back uh, and I got about halfway through that book and I just got so stuck um and the way that we were working before is uh I would write uh, and then she would read and, and give me reactions to it. And when, once I got stuck, we started to talk about not what, uh, what I already had written, but what was what, what I could write. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. by the time we finished the book, uh, a lot of the ideas in the, in the plot came from Deb or from you know the two of us together. So it just seemed fair uh, that yeah. Deb's name should go on it. And so that's the way, the way we do it now. We're writing, we write the prequel books together mm -hmm. uh, we're writing the next uh prequel book called desultai and and this time it's from the beginning we, we've okay. developed it it'd right. be really difficult for us to kind of tease out who which part came from which person it's, yeah. it's a combined effort but he it's one voice and it's his voice i do all the writing in terms of the writing mm -hmm. my big contribution i would say is um themes and this is like this, and this is like, I'm always thinking bigger and broader. Um, my undergraduate degree is in English literature way back in the day. 
So I wrote a lot. I read a lot and wrote a lot of papers about what are the themes of this and what when you use this word or this character, whatever, what does it mean? And how does this iconography fit in with this here? And how does it fit to the broader cultural and social and all of that? And Ross is always going, but what's, what's the, the plot? plot? Yes. <laughs> right. So there's the big picture. But what happens in the yes. book? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, and I really like that about them, too. Um, and you also are writing short stories. Ross, I hear uh, Nara's story found a home in Sword and Sorcery magazine. That's exciting. Mm. Yeah, I uh, I um, started writing short stories to sort of kind of explore different parts of the world because uh, fantasy involves a lot of world building. Um, and so I wanted to play around with different ideas. Um, and uh, Nara Flynn is one of the sisters. She's an imperial witch. Uh, and I wrote a chapter for her in Spirit Sight, and I loved this character so much. I sat down and wrote that thing like I was typing. Like, I didn't even have to stop and really ponder it. It just came out of me. Mm -hmm. But that chapter didn't make the, the book. So uh, Nara's story was my attempt to write something with that character mm -hmm. uh, that I could then publish somewhere. Um and I just wrote a reader magnet. Um, if you sign up for my um, my uh, newsletter list. RossHightower.com. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, you get that storage uh, um, for free. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's great. Um, yeah. And we will put the links below for readers so that you can great. find all of this. Um, and this is a, this is great. If, if you can get a free story, if you haven't read any of these books, yet and you're listening in that is a way to take a look but believe me you'll be popping on amazon before the story is over um argent blue is a fascinating fusion of uh, adventure witchcraft and extraordinary power and one of your readers described it as lord of the rings meets robin hood which i know we loved. yeah <laughs> we're right. like dang that should have been on the cover yeah, yeah. <laughs> that always happens Later, somebody uh, says something, and you're like, oh, where were you when I was trying to do the summary? <laughs> that's right. The hardest part of writing, the little description and blurb oh, and stuff like that is so hard. Yeah. It's, another, it's another discipline altogether. I mean, just because you right. can write a book doesn't mean you can do all the rest of it or the other mm. way around. So, yeah. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And so um, readers may or may not understand the, the phrase world building, but you surely know it when you see it. And so it, for anybody listening, if you are not an aspiring writer, and that's a foreign term to you, what happens is when you get into this book, it's real. And that is when you can tell that somebody has built a world. And um, I think it's interesting that they're comparing your books to Lord of the Rings because Tolkien wrote an entire four or five different cultures complete with language and histories and everything. So that is the mark of, of really good writing. And um, I've seen that in your books. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's, it, <laughs> We're still waiting to get our letter for Hogwarts. <laughs> so, you know, we yeah. believe all of it. I think it comes by owl or something. I saw on YouTube. What I heard. Right. So yeah. cute. And as if your prose and world building aren't masterful enough, you treat your readers to an entire treasure trove of maps and more. There's a little QR code that takes you to a mm -hmm. bunch of things. I guess we'd call them Easter eggs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a complicated story. Uh, there are a lot of characters and plot lines. And so having study aids help, right? So, you know, most fantasy authors put a, a map at the at the beginning of the book and it's really not very detailed and so i wanted to put something in that has um a lot more detail mm -hmm. um and it's annotated uh so you can see well this is where this happened right, right. and so uh and then a, uh, every book has a list of characters um and uh a brief um you know uh description of where they fit in the story but the website also has a, a comprehensive list of characters that says which books they appeared in and whether they're Imperial or Alios or, or, and so forth. Yeah. Well, you can tell that he was a former professor. Yeah. So that level. That's okay. and I, I was thinking how much that'll come in handy when they do the movie. And so when they do the IMDB oh, page, yeah. it'll be right there. We're figuring out who, like that, when we're in our cups, we're just like, okay, so who do you think should yeah, play, who's Aaron? Playing Aaron. So <laughs> who's, who's playing Aaron? Who's playing Ugrit? 
Yeah, and I have, have, you, got, I have, have you got ideas of, yet? No, no. Yeah. 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 Mostly just pictures right now of this is the type of character. Mm -hmm. This is what we want them to look like. But we um we don't want to have the faces on the covers, on the covers because we yeah. want people uh, uh, make up their own mind. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. If if there's anything that I sometimes get disappointed about when a book turns into a movie is that that the Producers don't always get everything right. Here's an example. Um, I don't know if you were fans of The Hunger Game, but it became oh, wow. an absolute scandal that the cat was the wrong color <laughs> in the first movie. And I in did the not second, know. yes, it was a black and white Maine Coon. And are you kidding? Its name was Butterscotch. What were you thinking? Okay. So they had to go out and find a giant ginger Maine Coon for the rest of the movies. <laughs> We, every now and then when we're writing, Ross is going, oh, this is a little inconsistency. And I said, we pray for someone to get so <laughs> yes. upset about it right. that they start a Reddit thread. And you said on page 45. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Bring it, man. And just, that's, um, that's what we want is people reading it that are that thrilled that they notice the mistakes and the details. Right. Yep. Yeah, and I need to tell the um, the listeners right now. Ross is manifesting one of his characters. He's a spirit right now. He's in and out. So. Oh, <laughs> I, I got to keep my head right in the yeah, right place. I just have to stay. I understand. So, well, readers are loving the series. Reviews are stellar. Uh, you won a bunch of awards. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you can't complain about that. Um, so, what's your favorite part about being a writer? Well, for me, it's the writing. I mean, uh, that first day I went, I, you know, I woke up with that idea in my head. I went to a coffee shop and wrote for like three hours, uh, even, even though it was not very good. I just so hooked. I mean, it, I feel so, you know, mellow and good after I write. And I still that way every day. Every day I write afterwards, I feel wonderful. I just love my story and the characters. Um, yeah. And I, and it's, hard for people who don't write to understand that uh, when you're a pantser, you don't really know what's going to happen, right? So you're trying to find out what happens the same way a reader would. Uh, yeah. And it you know, keeps you going. And I, I love it. The, the other, Marketing the, stuff. I'm, oh, my God. <laughs> I actually, for Desultai, I'm writing, there's a thing we have to do called a, a questionnaire when you put in your book that says, this is the two sentence this, and this is that. I actually did, we, we still have to finish it, but I did that for Desultai. And I'm very much more, the stories I write are short stories. I mm -hmm. I don't have a, I don't, who knows if I ever have a novel in me, but I'm definitely more short form. And that was, uh, that kind of fit, but um, yeah, but the marketing is a mystery. Yeah. A oh, mystery. yeah. Um, are you are you doing book signings? Well, well, you know, we had a couple <laughs> book signings, and uh, you know, we were sitting there, and no one was coming to our table. So we actually went to LA Comic Con uh, the first year. You know, it, so. it it just felt like swipe left, swipe left, no, oh. right, nope, right. So we're what when we do book signings again, what we're going to do is have a sign. We're going to be working. We're each going to have our computers out. We're going to have a sign saying. Writers at work ask questions if you would like to talk to us. Otherwise, we're just going to work. Yeah. But yeah. we do have big launch events. That yeah, we do have big launch like, events. Uh, a local yeah. brewery uh, where we do a lot of our our discussions. Uh, they brew a beer for the uh, books, um, and uh, we have music and we have uh, a reading. Last time we had actors act out a scene. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, and we we also always have other authors to come and yes. do signings. So uh, they're yeah. they're pretty pretty big events. This yeah. year in the fall, un unless I lose, uh, I'm going to lose my mind doing it. But you know, it's a it's a it's a Ren Fair kind of world, right? I mean, yeah. it's a well, we're going to do three weeks after our local Bristol Renaissance Fair closes, three weeks early in the fall on the autumnal equinox. We're going to do Argren Fair. Because that's the land where the people live. Ar Argren. Yeah. So we're going to have. So it's Argren Fair. Argren Fair. 
you know, so I'm trying to come up with imagery and uh, like vendors, and vendors. So I'm going to all these different things like, um, but it's got, we're, we want to have, we want, we're going to have like creative anachronism folks and, you know, so we'll see if it, it'll be fun. It'll, if, yeah, it'll be fun because he's not really going to be, I'm the one that's going to be doing I'm the writer. <laughs> well, you're also very I, personable. I've met you. <laughs> Is, but I'm the hype machine, if they're such as it is. Yeah. Well, I think that these can be really fun. Uh, I know it, it's fun for readers. Uh, uh, the last person that I interviewed was a horror author, and she mm. wrote um, some books that take place in a, a sort of moving um, bazaar around the world, and they sell wow. strange things. They did a bazaar, and they wow. had... Oh, did they have, they had a really good turnout. So yeah, I think that the readers and especially um, you guys are just getting started. I mean, you've really got more books coming and really just what, two out and one in pre-order. So I have, uh, we have well, I have three out, but it's, it's a, uh, um, it's because my publisher, Black Rose Writing, asked me to split the first book in two. Spare okay. Set into two. So, okay. Beautiful uh, covers too. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Oh yeah, they they do a great job. Yeah. We yeah. have and the this the sequel to Spirit Sight comes out uh, August first, and the sequel to there there you go. Argon Blue comes out November first. Okay. Right. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, no, but I that'll be fun, I think, and I think that that what you're trying to do is going to end up being very successful and put you on the map too. Yeah. So. Thank you. Yeah, I th actually think that the uh, cons are a good idea. I've seen people writing in your genre who are doing cons. It's just yeah. a matter of whether or not you're there with somebody else who they already know about or if they've heard of you yet, you know. So, but I do think that you're going to be at home there. Yeah. Yeah. The one, the one other thing that we have done that we enjoyed was there's a, um, a group in Milwaukee that's called Awkward Nerd, and oh. they do a pair. Yes. And I don't even live in Milwaukee and I've heard of them, but I have two friends that live in Milwaukee. So yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. And they do really good events very well. And we, we did really well. We didn't really sell like, a well. huge amount of yeah. books, but we had a lot of folks come up and talk with us. We had one woman that was walking around with the book trying to get <laughs> other people. Yeah. Yeah. So you need that small rabbit fan base mm -hmm. to, You're right. you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, everybody people... starts somewhere. You, you Well, you yeah. have been requested I don't know if you are aware of this, but there is a whole list of people that I would like to interview. And right now I am busy working through people who have been nominated by a reader. So off the top of my head, I can't tell you who nominated you, but I don't oh, wow. have the luxury of interviewing who I want because this is a reader focused program. If you're here, someone knows who you are. Wow. Holy so cow. That's a thing. It's yeah. Probably her mother. It's probably <laughs> Here you, you know go. what? We're sending out like super great vibes. Wow. That's it. That's it. Okay, You're manifesting yeah. here. So yeah. yeah. Right. So you you've kind of pretty much told us what's next. Is there anything else about that that you wanted to tell people? Uh, well, I think uh, um, uh, Spirit Light to uh, Volume One, which I I'm going to break that into two books as well because I write really long books. Uh, it's world building. Uh, it's a really good story, uh, and you know the men and alien characters are you know, maturing uh, mm -hmm. and having to you know now the empire knows who they are, mm -hmm. right? And so um, they have to um, to grow into to, to their power mm -hmm. a lot more. And then Desultai is uh, the Desultai were an order of women who fled the this authoritarian empire, and they can't. They knew they couldn't defend themselves in a military point. But they're imperial. So they made themselves okay. extremely wealthy. Right. Um, and the Zalta is the story of one of these Alios women uh, joining the order. And she faces a lot of, um, you know, bigotry. And uh, it's a really great story. Um, and our beta readers have just loved it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And there's not a huge amount of magic in it. Yep. Um, but it is very, it's... Um, a lot of themes. And to me, like with this whole, they all, every single one of these books 
And this is kind of what we talk about a lot. Like, where does this fit in? Because it's it will be 10 or 11 books and it all is going to come to a head at the end of the last book. That's, okay. Well, anyway, I hope so. Fingers yeah. crossed. I mean, like, it's it's all building to something. Yeah. So one of the things that we're hoping, like, people say, which order to read it in, and we never know what to say. Like, because if you read one, then it spoils the other one, but then you can kind of, maybe it's you just see it as an Easter egg. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember that from... But they they all connect with each other. There's none that's a one off. Yeah. Okay. Well, and anytime you do a prequel, then people just assume, well, do I have to, you know, start over with this? No, no. It gives you the backstory, so you can look at things that way too. Uh, yes. You know. Right. The prequels just make it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would encourage. Um, I personally, feel, I'm in reading book uh, two now. I'm have mm -hmm. already read book one, um, and I have not read the prequel. So mm -hmm. I would personally, I would say you could read them in any order, but um, mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. It probably makes sense if you start with one and, and go through. But I mm -hmm. also don't have an opinion on the, the prequel yet. I just know that it's all good writing. That's all I know. <laughs> More is good. <laughs> yeah. It's a short, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit less world building simply because the world is built in a sense, like, um, it's faster paced. It's faster paced. Yeah. 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 So yeah. like you said, now you have the plot because everybody already knows what the neighborhood looks like. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's great. So is there a question I have not asked that you wish I had? Oh. Uh, no, this has been actually a really yeah. you know, interesting interview. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. So well, it's been yeah. my pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank it's you so much. Always good to talk to you guys. Um, and listeners, um, as always, I will post all the links below so you can find Ross and Deb's books and stay abreast of their passion projects and figure out whether they've got some kind of a uh, um, happening in your area. Also, a quick right. reminder, there are some gift holidays coming up. And as we all know, books make excellent gifts. You might not know somebody's favorite color or their size, but you probably can figure out what they like to read. Also, readers, please remember to leave a review. It's the book version of Like, like and Subscribe. And you can right. follow your authors on Amazon. Not everyone knows that. Um, if you do that, then just like your favorite YouTube channel, you will receive an alert when there's something new to view. So, Ross, Deb, it has been wonderful. Um, thank yeah. you so much. Thank, thank you, Kat. you. Appreciate it. Thanks.